Ooh, look at this scarf. Look at this scarf. How fresh is that? I just got that last time we were at the garden for my girl. I don't even wear scarves, but this shit is fresh as hell. So I'm going to wear it for the video. All right, so we're midway through the 2024 season. Here's just a realistic breakdown because I happen to be a realistic Nick fan. I don't see a lot of you guys out there anymore. It's either like negative Nick fans or it's just people that blow this franchise just because they want to get a whole bunch of followers on Twitter and that's just unrealistic. Most of you guys are weirdos and probably never actually played a game of basketball on like any type of decent level. Let's just keep it a book. That doesn't mean that I played the highest level of caliber basketball or you have to, or you have to play basketball to even understand the game. But some people clearly don't understand the game and it feels like you're just tweeting some shit just to get some attention sometimes. I'm not about this super homerism at all. And it almost makes me feel like, am I negative? Cause I'm not. I have an optimistic view about this team and uh, especially the culture for the first time ever, we seem to have actually built the culture consistent years back to back. Like the one year we had with Nick's tape with Mello was one year. And they ripped all those guys that were building culture. They ripped the JK, they ripped off uh, all the vets. Sheed Wallace was here, you know, everyone was back here. And just those guys that they put around Mello for that year built culture. But a lot of them were old and you know, things happened. But this year we're just heading in the right direction with young guys able to build culture. And it's all due to one man, Jalen Brunson. This guy's already a Nick legend. Um, I got a signed pitcher, which I'm so glad I picked up this summer before he became an all-star. And it's in my office to him. And people are like, wow, you got that? Yeah, I got that already. He's already a Nick legend. Like, that's how good this fucking guy is. And the only thing I'll say about this Celtics game, again, we're midway through the season. All-star break just happened. We went on a roller coaster ride with them winning 10 straight with OG Ananobi. And it seems like he's definitely added such a vital piece and he's such a gel piece for what Tibbs wants to do and what kind of ball we want to play. It's just like typical Knicks though, right? Like, it's just like, you can't get past these stigmas sometimes. As a Jet fan, it's like the Aaron Rodgers injury is like, just happens this year. It's like, are we cursed? And you hate to think like that, but the, you know, state of New York sports almost puts you in that New York state of mind, that, that funk of like, yo, are we fucking cursed? Is this real? Like, is this really happening? But I'm not gonna take it to there with the Knicks because it's not, because even after that happened, we make some great moves at the deadline, get Burks back here. I love Burks when he was here. Um, we bring Bogey in, you gotta love Bogey, you gotta love like how, like, you know, just classic bucket getter, especially for this like white guy that's not that quick and stuff. He just knows how to play ball. Um, the only thing that I'll say is I definitely miss Grimes. I'm not one of these guys like, oh, Grimes is like a key piece or he, he could have been this. And like one of these guys that overvalues our own players. Like that's a recent thing I've seen online with Knicks fans is like, oh, we can't get rid of it oh, quickly. We can't get rid of this guy. It's like, yes, they're NBA for the first time ever. Knicks fans are watching NBA caliber players, but other teams have these guys too. It's just that we've been in such a fucking drought. For 30 years, like two years here and there, one with the Knicks tape year and then one other. But other than that, it's such a fucking drought that we don't even know what NBA talent looks like. Like we had like D League level teams like Langston Galloway was our best player like for like two years in a row. That was a real thing. And I love Langston. I bought his shirt and everything. Like I'm always rocking with the team, but... I'm also not like one of these guys that's gonna sit there and watch a garbage product. I'm gonna go to the gym and play ball myself. I'm not gonna like, I'll catch the highlights. Like I'm a fan, but I'm not a fucking weird homer like some of you people are. But I'm would you ride or die through thick and thin. Either way, however you wanna call it, I'm still a fucking fan. I got my Langston Galloway shirt. I still go to the games. I still support, I still watch them when I can, but I'm not like putting aside time in my busy life to make sure I catch all meaningless games. So, you know, I'm not going to compete with you people online that are like that. Um, but yeah, man, like Langston was just like a bench player in the NBA. Like, that's what he is. And like, think about how bad if he was our best player, how bad the rest of that roster is. Like, that's what how starved we've been that our fans are so delusional. Like, we can't get rid of this guy, can't get rid of this guy. But back to the point with Grimes, the only reason I like... 
even when he first came, like I feel like this year he was finally getting it because sometimes like he was moving too fast and I feel like the game was moving too fast for him I know that that's a little bit of just like his style but it's also just like he's a rookie and, and even in his second year it looked like you know he was just moving too fast like the opposite of Brunson Brunson is just playing at his own pace and like everyone is just like adapting to him and he's just his energy his momentum sets the tone but he kind of Grimes grew into his was growing into a nice position on his team and it's just going to take time for these guys to gel Burks even though he's been here before it's going to take time for this guy to gel and like bogey like these are guys that want the ball in their hands so as much as I like it like we could have used only one of them. I don't know if we need two. Like, I'm never going to... I actually like both players, and I'm not going to, like, rip against depth because, ironically, we need it now. But it's going to take time for guys that have the ball in their hands to gel with one another. And we had something very special. I'm not saying that it's gone. I'm just saying it's going to take time to actually get it back to what it was when we're on that 10-game win streak. There's a reason that there's addition by subtraction with R.J. Barrett because basketball is a chemistry sport. It is more than any other sport. It doesn't matter how the NBA has evolved. It doesn't matter that a lot of things are just ISO and it's just about sticking the best talented guys around one another. It is, but it's not. Like that Warriors team, it was so chemistry heavy. Like it was so, so like that was the most dominant team we've seen in the NBA maybe ever, right? It's like one of the best teams in the NBA. Even before KD got there and Barnes was there, they weren't that much different of a team. Like obviously replacing Barnes with Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant buying into the system is just scary, but he stepped foot into something that was already a proven thing. Why? Because of chemistry and ball movement and guys that have a culture and guys that work with one another and they understand the flow of the game and everyone knows their fucking role and it's not too many guys that have the ball too much. You know, like when it's just, it's, there's only one rock in basketball. You know, that's why some, you need a center that's just going to do dirty work. You need a guy that's just going to shoot a three and D play defense. Like there's a reason that these things exist and there are like anomalies and different things that, you know, with certain guys at certain times that definitely break the mold. But at the end of the day, like OG such an addition by subtraction more than anything else. Cause he doesn't need the ball in certain spots. Like he's cutting to the basket. DiVincenzo is finding him on great looks. Oh, Dante DiVincenzo, man. Oh, my God. Fucking love the kid. Fucking love him, man. Look at, like, and, like, he's already got the chemistry from playing with Hart, from playing with Brunson. These guys already have chemistry before the NBA. So that's something special. And when it comes down, you know, I'm going to segue off into this right now because there's three guys I want. You know, we obviously made the trade for Burks and Bogey. There was three guys I wanted to get. One, Donovan Mitchell. Obvious reasons he wants to be here. He's a stud. Two, DeMar DeRozan. He's a vet, can hit big shots. He's had experience. I think that's what this team could use. Um, another threat in the playoffs. Three, who I wanted the most, Mikhail Bridges. Um, I know that Nets probably going to ask for a shitload to get him, but it's who I want the most. He's already got chemistry with these guys. He already has it. And that's something you can't put a price on. Um... I, I, I really hope we find a way to get him in the offseason or something because I know we have a lot of picks. So, I mean, I'm willing to give those picks for that kid. And he's young, too. And so you're already, like, plugging him into this is, like, something that will be set here for the next couple years. Um, but back, back, I, I don't want to carry too, too long, but I do want to talk about where we are. And I'm just making this video just as, like, a Knicks fan just so I could look back at it. Like a couple years from now, I'll be like, oh, remember that point in time when the Knicks were at this point in building this culture and we finally have arrived. Jalen Brunson finally got his all-star. We finally started really hitting a stride. We were second in the East. Um, and it seems like we can really make this trip to the Eastern Conference Finals, which we definitely still can. I'm not really scared of Philly. I think Milwaukee would definitely be a tough series, but I think we could win at full strength. Um, the Heat, the only thing with the Heat, even though they beat us last year and they're such a good well-coached team and they play such good sound basketball better than us i don't know how how many years you can just kind of like wait till the playoffs to turn it on like i think that's eventually gonna bite you in the ass so i don't know if i really see the heat doing what they've been doing traditionally um even though you can't count them out and i don't want to sleep on the Cavs, even though we because like we handled them 
I think that if we f like face them again, it would actually be a little bit of a tougher series, even though I think that we still have the edge on the Cavs. Um, it's the Celtics. I think the Celtics, last night, I watched the game. Um, man, they're obviously at full strength. But, man, goddamn Drew Holiday. Like, goddamn Drew Holiday, man. This guy completely changed the Celtics. And when they made those moves, you're like, you're bringing in Porzingis, a guy that's like, yeah, we know him as Knicks. We know him as Knicks fans. Like, listen, there's a lot of things he's brought to the court. And last night we saw it, right? He's just like, he's huge, man. We can't go out there with a small lineup. It's such, like, he's going to take advantage of these mismatches. He's 7-3. just puts the ball in the hoop. Like, Dante DiVincenzo trying to guard him. We have a very small lineup out there. It's, like, embarrassing. But he's brought a dynamic to that team. But Drew Holiday has become the glue to that team. And damn, for the first time, like, I always known he's good defensively and he does the little things. And I feel like sometimes he got overlooked in Milwaukee, you know, even though we know that he was that next piece that actually gave him that championship. Look at now what he's done to this team. You're no longer just relying on Jalen Brown and Tatum to get hot. And it seemed like they were taking turns. You know, a lot of it just seemed like, all right, like, hopefully, like, Tatum goes for 35 tonight. If not, then maybe Brown will. Like, that was legit their game plan. And then, like, maybe Derek White or Mar Marcus Smart could get you, like, fired up when that's not working. But, again, like, more of the same. It's just taking turns. Drew is the glue. That guy is the glue. He's just, like, he makes sure they get good shots. Even all the a lot of the shots he took were just not rushing, just taking his time, getting a clean look, swinging the ball, making sure. And it seems like everyone has just been feeding off of him. And no one's in a rush to score or worried about their own stat lines. And they're all eating. And like you could see they put up those five players. They're all in double digits. And that's scary. That's tough to beat, man. Uh, the Knicks are not there yet. Even at full strength, we are not there yet. You saw it last night when we played a good team. Sometimes there's just too many points in the game where it's Jalen Brunson and everyone else doesn't know what to do in crunch time. We saw it against the Lakers when the Laker game got very close. Again, it's Jalen Brunson. Everyone doesn't really know what to do. Like at the end of that game, I love Josh Hart more than anything, but sometimes he gets the ball and it's like, Josh, you got to shoot the fucking ball, man. I don't care if you miss. It's a better move than sometimes like driving and not going anywhere. Even though last night, like sometimes he will get in the lane and just go to the rack. If you're going to go to the rack, shoot it. If you're going to shoot it, sometimes the in-between shit is just like, <sighs> that's the only, th only thing that I'll say negative about Josh Hart because I love that man. I love him. I love everything he brought to New York, brought to this team, brought to this culture. I'll live with that all day. He's made actually big threes in the playoffs last year. So, you know, he, he actually has for as much as we can knock him for not shooting, not the willingness to shoot, or just not the efficiency to shoot. Um, and just his overall body of work that he brings, man, every night, the offensive rebounds, he's built this culture, man. That's what we are. That's what New York is. And like, we are Josh, Josh Hart. That's the heart of the city, Josh. Um, even though it's Brunson's town. But, man, I just wanted to say, like, I think it's going to take time for Burks and Bogey to gel. I think that we need to, like, take a step back and realize, take, you know, that Lakers game, take that Celtics game and, and think, all right, we still need a little bit of work at the end of the game. It just can't be Brunson. It just can't be. Um, that's the only thing that worries me a little bit. Other than that, I think we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone because if OG's back, I think he's even more important than Randall being back. But OG, Randall, and I don't know if Mitchell Robinson is coming back. If he is, oh, my God. Like, man, we're going to be tough. We're going to be a tough out. No one's going to want to fucking see us. And if you say you do, you're kind of lying at this point. And that's not no more like a Nick fan just saying, yo, you don't want to come to New York. You don't want to come to the Garden. Think how long we got played and clowned for saying that as fans. When, like, things started trending up and we jumped on it too early saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's, like, real. And it almost feels surreal that it's real. It almost makes me, like, not even want to, like, brag and get fake excited because now you're like, whoa, we actually have the potential to make this run to Eastern Conference Finals. And when you're at the Eastern Conference Finals, anything can happen. Um...
anything could happen because you want to get you want to get the Celtics in like a gritty game. You want to get take Jalen Brown like out of his own head. Like last night he got cooking. That's another thing. Can't put too much stock into one game. These guys got cooking. They were flowing. The rhythm was finding them. The ball was dropping from three. They were getting looks in the paint. Um, we didn't have OG on the court such a huge loss because of the height like like i was saying we were just had a little lineup out there that's too small of a lineup to go against kp hawford um drew holiday who could bully the little guards and then tatum and brown like it's too small of a lineup but at full strength randall og hartenstein iheart radio or fucking big mitch rob that's a completely different animal for the celtics to face defensively completely different and if we get in a gritty game it's anyone's game and then you know if we could sneak some games out it becomes anyone's series real quick so um like i said i'm just doing this for myself i'll check back in with you guys i just wanted to capture history where we are as a knicks fan and i'm not doing this for any like other reason just to post this just so I can look back at it. But if you are a Knicks fan, please feel free to comment. This is reality Knicks. This is not, I'm going to blow the Knicks. We're going to the finals. This is not, oh man, we just had like a good run. We're going to get knocked out. Fuck this, Tibbs. We need to fire Tibbs because he's not going to get us over the hump. Fuck that shit, man. He's been coaching long enough. He deserves his shit more than anyone does. Um, so I'm, I'm with it, man. I'm, I'm down. I'm here. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to get fired up. Um, I know we're going to hit a little, you know, skid bumps here now, kind of in the third quarter of the season, but that's good. It's going to give times guys more time to gel than needed, like Bogey and Burks, and get them in the mix a little bit more and, and get them, like, part of the system more and more practice and more reps. And then hopefully it all comes together because if it does come together, it's, it's going to be scary, man. We definitely have, like, for the first time in a long time, the best lineup the Knicks have had in my lifetime. Uh since the 90s. Whew, man, man, it's been a long fucking time. Shout to New York. Go New York, go New York, go.